uh let us cover the inside the games this is going to cover the new region the new features of the vessel of hatred i'm excited let's see what the comments think um hopefully in-game bestiary oh man yeah why doesn't diablo have an in-game bestiary this is crazy party finder yep party finder is already announced uh uber torment bosses uh, how many players want to play alone? Well, it's only one end game activity that is with people. So I don't know why people are complaining about it. Like, I genuinely don't know. Uh, I, I think, it, I think it's very silly. And, and like, you know, playing with people is a good thing. Trying to create that and still that is a good thing. But yeah, we'll give off our full reactions. So let us get ready for Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred. Um, I am most excited for the mercenaries. And I'm most excited for the new abilities for every single class. The fact that they're even slightly looking at every single class is a good thing. I hope they continue to do that. And I do like that they're making Paragon boards a little less idiotic and overly, overly obtuse. Uh, and I'm hoping that they, I don't know if they will, but I'm hoping they take some of the complexity out of Paragon boards and add it into the base leveling tree of every single class. Because every single class's base leveling tree is very, very boring. Uh, compared to games like Path of Exile, compared to, and Path of Exile is a little too complicated, but compared to Last Epoch. Last Epoch is like a really good middle ground where every single level feels important. Every single like skill point feels like you have real choice and you can make any kind of ability really strong or really weak or whatever. It's so cool. It's so cool, man. Um... Let us see the Vessel of Hatred. In Vessel Inside of Hatred, we travel south to Nahantu. Why did they, they make him look extra wide? <laughs> the perspective is off, that's so weird. A region with both deep ancient jungles and vast sprawling plains. It's the last stretch of land in Sanctuary's eastern continent, and we've packed it full of experiences for every type of player. In this expansion, there's a whole lot to explore under the dark canopy of Nahantu. Nahantu is the southernmost region of the eastern continent that Diablo IV has been taking place in. It's the last region that we haven't visited yet so far in the game, but it is one that we've been to before in Diablo. There's lots of new areas. <coughs> we have six in total. Four of them oh, are sorry jungle about that. themed, I and I then we have two Clear that are Red Rock Canyon, but each one of them has their own unique identity. When you first arrive in Nahantu, you're in this place called Lingering Hatred. This is a high treetops uh, camp. Also called How I Feel About Sony. Lingering Hatred. Sorry, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Every time I can get a chance to shit on Sony right now, I will take. Canopies where you're almost walking amongst the, the branches high hatred. above the jungle floor. Imagine a thick canopy that the light is just barely poking through. The whole area has been infected oh by this God. thing called the Hollows infestation. The, the Hollows, hollows are a new wait, it's associated with Dark Souls. They're trying to cater to us Dark Souls players. Smart. Hey, look, Blizzard is at their best when they're stealing everything from everyone. So this makes sense. This makes sense. Mephisto. They themselves are kind of like a tar-like substance creature born straight out of the depths of hell. It feels a little twisted. There's a sickness to the area itself. Humans have ventured into this deep part of the jungle where there's all this poisonous plants and, and flora. Okay. The dregs actually started experimenting. Hold on, let's take a quick gander back. Look at that scythe. I hope we can use something that looks that cool. That looks really, really cool. I want this. And I hope we can use something like this. We already have scythe in the game, but none of them look quite like this for sure. I actually started experimenting with eating these hallucinogens and it put them oh, into yeah. this aggressive psycho rage. Drugs good. The dregs were pretty fun because we were able to push more variety in the monster family. You okay. have one of these tall dregs and then half of a body of another dreg on top of it. That's cool. This, 
this is good design unironically. Unironically good design. This is like something out of Mad Max. Except like, you know, in Nahantu. This is like Mad Max Nahantu. I want more of this. More good creature designs to beat the shit out of is only a W here. That kind of controlling it and telling it where to go and tossing poisonous bombs at the player. When you come across it, it's very memorable. And that then we've cool. also got the area of Tenganse, where you've got the Tenganse Plateau, which is full of these red rocked plateaus and canyons. They've got all kinds of Imagine animals here. Imagine getting up above the land, those gigantic walls. Yeah, some verticality. One of the coolest areas in Diablo 4 right now is that I forgot, uh, I think we were fighting one of the demons or whatever in the story, and it's like that big arena that we can look down into. That was really cool. And I really wish there had been more of that in Diablo 4 already. And there's some cliff areas here and there and stuff, so there it's not like there's none. But I do wish there was more. I always thought that perspective was like one of my favorite parts of the original Diablo 4 campaign have pockets inside where monsters could live. It offered up a lot of opportunity to bring back a monster family like the Lacunae. We're bringing them back in a new way here as a fully fleshed out monster family with multiple classes. I did not hear what that. What a more force looks like, what a caster looks like. <clears throat> they are very much apex predators and we're okay. definitely in their territory. The and then the there's a little sub area called the Skittering Earth. The name alone makes your skin crawl. And it's bug infested, and you can see how the bugs have destroyed the jungles and kind of input their influence on it. Within the field of giants, you have these giant corpses of these okay. long dead demons that humans have begun to mine away at for their resources. That's cool. I like while that. They've got a lot of use out of them. Yeah, that's like that's like some Guardians of the Galaxy thing, making a city inside of a skull. That is so cool. I love also that. Also toxic to the land around it. The what do you guys think of this ambiance so far? Massive demons. Dark shade, Arkosh, Higher Lux. What do you guys think? years ago is James. really thought provoking. Plateau's also got just this beautiful color scheme to the lighting. It's really lovely to be there. Yeah. And then horrific at the same time. You know, it's great. Yeah, all was good. The mercenaries in Vessel of Hatred are a yes. group of people who. We like to describe. So this is this is the demon lady. Uh, oh yeah, this is like the shield guy. There's a shield guy. This is the barbarian lady who just smashes shit. And there's like the sorcerer guy. Or sorry, uh, necromancer. I think. I think this one does like the fire damage. As ordinary people with yeah. extraordinary skills, it's, they have it, too, the same actually. level of will to fight against the demons of hell. And there's four mercs that you can collect over the course of the campaign. It starts with Rahir, a blacksmith and a shield bearer is a more defensive fighter. He's able to go. Why can't we have a shield pro shield bounce ability? Why? We, we should have Crusader as one of the classes so we can do shield throws ourselves. I, I don't know what Blizzard is smoking, man. Go in there and like, like spirit, spirit bearer, spirit caller, whatever the fuck his name is, is cool. I'm excited for that class. But man, we all wanted the Crusader. We all wanted the Paladin, either Crusader or Paladin. Basically, the same thing. Like, dude, Up damage, use big miss opportunity. Walk against the enemy. You meet him early on in the campaign, and he's one who introduces you to the mercenary network. You end right. up finding acquisition quests for three other mercs that you can find throughout the course of the story. Subo, the drunken archer, is Subo, the gonna drunken work really archer. well for people who want someone who's out of the main melee in there the back, go. offering utility and that kind of range support. Then we have Variana, a Berserker Crone, who's a melee combat fighter, close range. She's got a really cool combat meter, a, a massacre meter, where you need to keep killing enemies to get the meter to be filled. Stop. That's dope. That is actually super cool. So each guy, each, each dude comes with his own mechanic almost. Uh, I don't know if they said one for the drunk archer, but like the massacre meter, that's, that's for that lady. The, the shield abilities, the big, like, you know, uh, protective dome and everything, that's the that's the shield guys that's the Rahir's stuff. Bunch of really interesting utility skills that you can kind Throw of Throw back to in. Diablo 3, Finally, exactly, we have yeah. the demon child, Aldkin, who's a magic user who can transform himself from human form to demon form and join you in combat. There's so that's his really mechanic, the fact that he can do that. Ability where you can yeah, take one so this is what I was talking about. You can take a mercenary skill and uh, basically link it with your skill. Th that's that's what it was that this is the reinforcement ability i forgot to say it 
But this is a really cool idea. I love this idea. The mercenary skills and attach it to one of Actually your powers so some that nuance. when you use that skill, Super it pulls cool. them in to do a specific skill. With the mercenaries for Vessel of Hatred, one of the things we are expanding on is yep. the skill tree. We actually have a skill tree and is much deeper than the skill tree for the previous mercenaries in Diablo 3, 100%. For Diablo 3, you Huge had a w. very basic type of Huge mercenary. W. But this time, you can actually push a little bit more into the skill tree and make the mercenary the way you would want to play. Going through each mercenary progression arc and outfitting their skill tree so that it's complementary to your character build, Yep. I think that's where the fun in the mercenary system really I lies. I like that. I like this a lot. Here we two gang. Oh, I mean, we'll be doing that as well. Don't worry. The Dark Shimmer. Citadel. I'm an ARPG enjoyer. I play them all. in Vessel of Hatred. It's Unironically, my favorite ARPG right now, Shunrei, is, is Last Epoch. Like, I love Last Epoch. Have you tried Last Epoch? That game is so good. An entirely Might play some cooperative tonight, since we're talking about it. experience. All the mechanics within it are based around you working yep. together with your party members. This is all party member stuff. Solve the this is, this is by the way, the everyone's being upset in the comments about, like, oh my god, I have to play with people. Okay, first of all, shut the fuck up. It's good to play with people. I mean, that's really healthy for an inherently, you know, multiplayer game. Second of all, they added a party finder to make it easier to do that. And we'll probably see that in this video. Third of all, it's only one in-game activity. That is it. There, the, every other end-game activity is solo. So the fact that we have one that has party members is not a bad thing. I don't know. I, I feel like the Diablo 4 community is just complaining to complain at that point. Uh, new season of uh, Last Epoch started. We played it, Aku. We, we literally played it, yeah. We didn't get that far in it, but we did start it, yeah. What's within? One of the outcomes of the Mage Wars is this giant crater. And I started a poison kind of uh, druid guy. Wars. What if the I don't like people? The goal of the first they can do Khazra, any other who are kind of the exchange. original Khazra, they're using <laughs> the oh powers within the citadel found within this crater to okay. perform experiments to try and bring back their dark god. Only recently, people have started going missing. Okay. They head into the Khazra region, they disappear never to be seen again. So it's clear that whatever they're planning is about to come to fruition, and your job as the players to get in there and stop it. Citadels are a place where we take... Not gonna lie, that entire little discussion is completely not compelling. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be genuine here. I'm gonna keep it... I'm gonna keep it 100%. Oh no, people are missing. That means they're doing some experiments and it's going to come to fruition. Th that's really uncompelling. Like, I, I want a storyline like the fucking, uh, the demon of hatred is on his way back. And he is back and you have to beat the shit out of him. In hell. Like, I want some crazy shit like that. Like, in the middle of that little temple, there's a portal to hell, and that is the only way to reach the bad guy, and you then go to hell, and then you beat the fuck out of hatred. Like, I want something like that. Like, I want something really compelling. That's the most lack... This is the lackluster part of the video so far. The only lackluster part of the video. Everything else looks great so far. What is the best part of Diablo? Combat and we test it in a different way. Yeah, the combat is, is smooth. in cooperative mechanics that you have to manage on top of that. Right. For example, a boss has an attack, and as a player, you have to collect an item that allows you to reflect the attack back at him. So there's a little bit of a Twitch level mechanic Ooh, there. Okay. You actually have to time your reaction. They added Zelda. They literally stole the Master Sword. Look at that. Blizzard stealing. That is when they're at their best, my friends. And that is also why Nintendo should not be able to, and no game company should be able to patent fucking game mechanics. Just, just you know, a little diatribe. Another reason why I hate this entire Nintendo debacle, where they're patenting game mechanics and then suing people. I hate that shit. Action hate shot. that shit so much. What's interesting about it is when you get multiple people in there, we're each responsible for reflecting that shot once, so we all have to sort of master the timing of that move. That is cool. You can't do that kind of thing without coordinating as a team, and that's sort of the example of what Citadel gameplay feels like. When designing the Citadel, we designed a lot of really cool a PM bosses. To me, yeah. So one of the things that we did is we took that design and made like armor sets for each of the classes. Okay. That way you feel like you took their armor and you feel like you're wearing a little bit of them after your victory. That's we also I like have a that. currency that's, cool. that's dedicated to Citadel where... Uh, hold on. Let's go back to that. Restore 30% health and drop health potions for nearby teammates. 
Okay, so it's like it's like um, something that helps you and also has utility for your team. That's cool. I like that. I like that. As you play through, a vendor can be interactive. Hold on. Let's see what the second one was. That's dedicated to. They hovered Citadel, over it. Where, as you. Um. Wait. Use while in dungeon to summon a treasure goblin. Everyone will be taking that. Everyone wants loot. Yeah, that's cool. And of course, that's the most expensive one because they know everyone wants to loot. Play through a yep. vendor can be interacted with to buy custom cosmetics oh that are unique God. to the Citadel. You can play with two people. In-game cosmetics for being able to do an end-game activity. W. Not to buy, but also just to have as like an in-game activity. I love that. This is W news. Absolutely W news. People, but the, the ideal experience is for four. But in order to facilitate that, we've built an all new party finder feature. And the community has been pretty vocal about wanting this for a long time. Yep. It made a lot of sense to The us. fact that we didn't have a party finder uh, situation or also the fact that we didn't have like a proper auction house type of thing uh, sucks. It, it sucked. It's been an entire over a year over a year since Diablo 4 came out, and we still are, uh, we're only now getting one of these two things. Dude, come on, Blizzard. Like, holy crap. I'm glad that they're doing it now, Party Finders a W, but the fact that it took so long was insane. Was insane. And thank you, Essential. I appreciate it, buddy. Us to pair it with this new Citadel mode. It really is an activity that's geared yeah. towards people who love to play together with their friends or with strangers and enjoy that cooperative game. One thing I don't like about the Diablo 4 community is how insular they are. And this is something with ARPG players in general. So ARPG players as a small streamer, for example, I can tell you like my little perspective on it. This is one of those games that I play for myself. Uh, well, ARPGs in general. And I don't play to like really grow the community. Because ARPG players all follow their favorite super large content creators, which are really good content creators. And then they never check out anyone else who's playing the game of any smaller size at all. And so a party finder system where you can make friends and make that individual connection with people is something that helps us out a lot. It, it helps everyone out, but it definitely helps the small creators out. And it makes me want to play the game more. Absolutely. This is, this is for sure. And this is why I play games like League of Legends. This is why I play games like Tarkov. And, you know, I used to play a little bit of Arena Breakout Infinite before you became paid to win and stuff. Because you can make friends with random people. Absolutely. It makes a huge, huge difference. Huge W for all of us. For everyone in between. Play. I cannot wait for players to get into the world. I'm really just excited for people to see all the little hidden storytelling elements that the team has fit in. I hope they do more of that because there was some of that in Diablo 4 and those are some of my favorite elements, but there isn't really nearly enough. Like, I, I do think that um, ARPGs in general would be very, very well suited to have like environmental storytelling on a higher level, to have more of it. To have more of it shared with, uh, you know, the player, uh, little nuances, little diatribes, little little lore pieces that you can find on the map and everything like that. I think like that's something that other RPGs have learned how to do really, really well, and ARPGs are just way behind on. And I think Diablo Four might unironically do that better than any other ARPG on the market right now, uh, inclusive of you know. Path of Exile, inclusive of Last Epoch and everything like that. This is something that is in Diablo 4 already. Unironic W. Unironic W. Just want more of it. There's interesting things to find and see and discover around every corner. And it's just a really great experience getting to explore and hunt. It's interesting that they didn't even mention the Spiritborn class in this entire video. But I guess it's because they went through it all in great detail already. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the uh, information? Let's read some of the comments, and I want to get your guys' input in chat. Uh, let me know. Uh, party finder by seeing things. People want to play alone, or we already discussed that. Um, not excited about any of these features as a lifelong solo player. This is one thing. It's, oh my god, dude. Yeah, this is why no one likes the Diablo 4 community. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah. Beyond okay, everyone is fucking raging about this. What the fuck? Yeah, I think this might be something people will complain about until they play it. 
I'm hoping. I am genuinely hoping. And this is, again, like I said, what did I just say? ARPG players are very insular, especially Diablo 4 players. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I think they're all just bitching. I, th I think they're all just bitching to bitch. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you pissed off about the endgame activity? Are you excited for it? What are you most excited for in the uh, Vessel of Hatred expansion? Uh, I'm I'm really excited, man. I'm excited about the uh, mercenary system. I'm excited about the leveling changes. Uh, and I think squishing the levels to 60 is a good idea. Um, it definitely, you know, considering that they do the seasonal system, it takes too long to get to 100. I don't really like seasonal systems in general, but if we have to have them, we have to have them. But at least let's do a little bit better on um, how we deal with that. Uh, I think this will be a pretty good expansion. And I think I will definitely play the hell out of it for the next month until Path of Exile 2 comes out. So there we go. There we go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would love to get your input on it. And uh, thank you so much for your information. And I will respond to every single comment in the video and catch you in the next video. Heck yeah, guys. Heck yeah. <clears throat> what do you guys think of it in chat? What do you guys think of it in chat? What is this? The next chapter. Long, eager character. Breaking up the... Oh, it's like the story of Nirel. I think I think the fact that Nerell is holding the um the the vessel of hatred and we're not is kind of silly. Path of Exile comes out like a month after this. So uh we can check right now. Path of Exile to release. Yep. Literally an exact month almost after the launch of Diablo 2 Vessel of Hatred. Sorry, Diablo 4 the Vessel of Hatred. November 15th. Very exciting. Very exciting. Should we cover some Path of Exile 2 news? Uh, I swear there are more important issues to complain about in games. Area pushing the grouping up is not one of those issues. Yeah, exactly. Especially, like, I would be, I would complain, Existential, if they were adding the group endgame activity without having Party Finder. Like, if they did it when not had Party Finder, I would be pissed. But the fact that they're adding Party Finder and they're doing this, that makes this better. Like, it's that simple. It's really that simple.